mean, I've been watching Sean fight since he was 17 years old um, at 165 pounds, and he used to knock people out in that division. So I believe that, you know, Sean has gone through evolution, many stages throughout his boxing career, and for whatever reason, he doesn't sit down on his punches the way he used to. You know, um, he likes output. You know, I don't know if he likes to use his strength and conditioning and get you in the wear and tear. Because when I fought him, I remember it was like the 10th round, I was up against the ropes and he was just going and going and going. And something in me said, he can't hurt you. He can't knock you out. But if he had it his way, he would allow, he wants you to quit. He wants to put you under pressure and he wants you to crumble under that pressure. But as long as you have a true heart of a warrior, as long as you're a real champion, you'll be able to stand up to uh, what Sean Porter brings out. Kel Brook did it, I did it, and I think Errol Spence would be able to do it too. Right, because it seems like that's what he's banking on. So if Errol has that, that dog in him, do you think any other path to victory is there for Sean? If When he's trying to make you feel uncomfortable, as long as you still are comfortable, you know, then you take away uh, his strong points. You know, I think Sean needs to do everything in his power when it comes to utilizing his head movement, keeping his hands up. Um, his defense was lax against Danny Garcia. His defense was lax against um, Ugas. His defense was on point when he fought me. He's going to need to bring uh, that same respect to Errol Spence because he took big shots from Danny. Um, he took clean shots from Ugas, and I just don't think he's gonna be able to constantly walk in and take those shots and walk out okay. You know, um, Errol still throws more punches than Devin Alexander. Errol is still a true welterweight where Devin Alexander is not. You know, when we watched uh, Porter defeat Devin Alexander, then we watched him defeat Paul Milanaji. You put a 140 pounder against Sean Porter, he will get ran over like a bulldozer. He did it to two of them, you know? But he didn't do it to me, he didn't do it to Kel Brook. He didn't run over Danny. I don't think he's running over Errol Spence, but if he's going to surprise Errol, you know, it's going to be on the inside, it's going to be all those punches, and he's going to feel that there's not a lot of power, but if he can mix up, boom, 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 Errol Spence, but, you know, you don't leave it up to the judges, and you just prove that, you know, the welterweight division is a dog's house. It's anybody's game. The thing about Sean, if you want to dominate Sean, like Errol says that he's going to do, if you want to dominate him, you can't let him fight any piece of his fight strategy because even if you're trading and you're going toe for toe, blow for blow, all that inside work, all that smothering, you don't know the judge's perspective. And, you know, it's easy in that scenario for the rounds to go towards Sean Porter. I think Danny did a great job against Sean Porter. What did he lack? Punch output. Spence is not going to lack punch output. He's not lack punch output against anybody to this date, and I don't expect it to change tomorrow. What's the biggest measuring stick in this fight matchup? Kell Brook. Mm -hmm. Kell Brook is the measuring stick of this um, scenario. So when we use Kell Brook as a medium to feel out this fight, you're going to lean towards Errol Spence. Not only did Errol Spence beat Kell Brook, he stopped Kell Brook. Like the Triple G fight in between. The Triple G fight in between, all that didn't matter, okay? Does it, did it help Kell Brook? Most likely not. But uh, Errol broke his face, okay? He broke another side of his face. It was a bone that's never been touched. It's a new fracture, new breakage. He got hit upside his head. And it was in the late rounds. He dominated, Kell Brook dominated the uh, opening rounds. And at the end of the day, um, you know, he came back strong in the end, like he always does. You know, Arrow walks you down. He puts those body shots on you. If you're getting tired in the eighth, and you take body shots, you're tired in the ninth, and you take body shots, how much do you have in the 10th, 11th, and 12th? You know, is Arrow gonna break Sean down to the body? Is he gonna be head hunting? Is it gonna be uh, boring, like the Mikey Garcia fight? I think not, because I think Sean will take risks. And, um, and make the side, uh, this fight exciting. Um, but really what he needs to do is box hard and box smart. While he's getting on the inside, while he's making all these adjustments, moving here and moving here, trying to um, stay away from that long jab, you know, he, it's the hooks and it's the uppercuts. Once when he steps in on that southpaw jab, you know, there's going to be a left uppercut waiting. We have not seen Sean Porter fight an elite southpaw of this nature, and that's another exciting thing about this fight. How's your hand? Ruiz Joshua. He's doing good. Good. Last question. Ruiz Joshua. So make sure you guys click and subscribe right here. And remember, it's fight night, bitches! <laughs>